well to the avionics company who now produces everything. What do you say? You've got an autopilot. We do indeed. We've certified the DSC-90. It's our new digital attitude-based autopilot that's designed as a retrofit for the Integra-equipped Cirrus fleet. For the change for the Cirrus crowd, they're moving from a rate-based autopilot to an attitude-based autopilot, so they're going to see significant performance improvements in that regard. In addition, we've got a straight and level button that's for unusual attitude recovery and also flight envelope protection that provides underspeed and overspeed protection. Well, one of the things that's going to be interesting about this is that the actual uh, changeover, the installation process, is not a big deal. That's correct. It's a slide-in replacement. Uh, there is a PFD mod, including hardware and software, and then you pull out the old flight computer and put in the DFC-90, and there's no wiring change, so it's a significantly reduced cost in terms of converting your airplane. The finished goods department has them on the shelf, and we have a huge backlog. So now that we've got the certification, those shipments are starting to happen. We're coordinating with the dealers to get the, uh, you know, the dates for when the airplanes can come in. The owners can arrive at the shop. We'll have a flight computer waiting for them and the software upgrade, and that'll just take place. And in a matter of two hours, they'll be in and out, kind of a drive-by upgrade. And the early adopters did, a, did pretty well by themselves, didn't they? Well, they really did. We had a promotional program. We really wanted to get this product into the market in, in, in a nice volume, so we priced it very competitively and uh, had a, a huge uptake of early adopters, and those folks have got a, a flight computer autopilot upgrade in the $10,000 range, which is fantastic. So, Indeed. Do, uh, do you have a number that you're willing to quote as far as how many people are waiting for the DFC-90? Well, we have over 250 on backlog. Oh, wow. Yeah, so... Uh, uh, it's a significant number that, you know, at ship we we're able to uh, get the, start getting those out into the market and we've got a, a huge number of those already pre-built and uh, ready to ship. Now as I understand it, the, uh, the training process is not exactly too circuitous. It's uh, apparently pretty simple. Well it is. We intentionally kept the user interface to be very familiar, uh, like the autopilot that was in the airplane. So you're not going to notice a lot of difference. There's going to be some big advantages because of the uh, added colors for enunciation. So the mode enunciation is going to be easier, but the overall knobology and operation is going to be very similar. The one key difference you'll notice is the addition of the airspeed bug and the airspeed pre-select. But it'll operate just like the vertical speed select that you're used to. Outstanding. Now, keep in mind, too, that what we're really waiting for, uh, at least me personally, is the DFC-100. But the DFC-90 technology has paved the way for what will eventually, for our nine users, be the DFC-100. Uh, what's the difference between a 90 and a 100? There are similar platforms, but there's a couple primary differences. To communicate with the uh, Release 9 system, it needs a uh, byte flight data bus, mm -hmm. where the DSC-90 is designed to work with the existing GPS navcoms in the airplane and the original Integra. So that's the interface is the first difference. The second is we've got a couple of added features, a vertical direct two feature and the uh, vertical nav feature. So. These are features that take advantage of the existing FMS in the airplane. Will we see, or is there any potential to adopting either the 90 or the 100 platform to other avionics uh, platforms? Well, first, there's a, a large number of Integra-equipped airplanes out there, so we've got opportunities, thousands. thousands. So, of course, the Cirrus is the large volume. We've also got the Piper fleet and the, uh, the Lance Air Columbia Corvallis fleet that are all chomping at the bit to get access to this autopilot as well. So we see that as the low-hanging fruit in terms of uh, ROI and business opportunity. Uh, and then, of course, any of the R9 equipped airplanes are going to be uh, a good candidate for the DFC-100. Uh, as we move through the, uh, the product roadmap for our autopilot, of course, we want to ultimately make that available as a retrofit into many more airplanes. And final question, when will we see a 100? I would expect we're probably 90 to 100 days in trail of the DFC-90. The DFC-90 took a little longer than we thought, but we were still on target. We, we said we'd have it by mid-year, and we made it before the end of June, which I was really glad to see. But uh, DFC-90, I would expect it'd be in, in mid to late Q4. Aero TV is brought to you by... Freedom Through Innovation. It's what led us to develop Cirrus Flying 2.0, the framework for a bold new take on private aviation. And as a result, the gap between the aircraft we produce and those of our competitors 
continues to widen, Cirrus knows where the personal aircraft industry is headed. We're already there.